Malin Matthews from Classical Guitar Shed, and let's talk about Packington's Pound. This is a wonderful old Renaissance piece. It's got such a great groove to it. If you'd like to stick around to the end of this video, then you can hear a full recording of me playing it as well. And in this video, we will talk about the full course that you can take on Packington's Pound and learn to play. There are four main sections here. Let's just take a look at this. This is, this is two of the three pages. And if you'll notice here, we have, I know it's very small, these big A and B sections and C and D. This step is four sections, but then we come back and play the top three again. So we have three sections and then the D section and then we play A, B, C again. So the full form of this is A, B, C, D, A, B, C, which means that you get double bang for your money on this first page here. So looking at this, there are a couple of defining features to Packington's Pound. First up, so we're in three, four times, so we're gonna count one and two and three and the whole time. And if we look at the rhythm, we have some common rhythms that happen all over the place. This first rhythm here, we see it a lot. And here it is again, and here it is again. And it's, so we have this rhythm that keeps coming back. And we also then have other rhythms that we also see quite a lot that come back. The way that this piece is put together is so we, is like we first say something and then we embellish it. So we say something straight and then we do a variation on it and just fill it in. And this is a really common way of composing back in the Renaissance. So for instance, for this first measure, so that's the first couple measures. Well, if we jump back down here to measure to practice section three, which in this course, we just divide the, the piece up into small sections and take them one at a time. Well, then we have, it's the same, but different. Same, same, but different. And so we embellish it. And there's a lot of that that goes on in this piece. So if you know that, then you can practice those two sections next to each other if you would like to, and it can make learning it much faster because then you're learning, you're probably take 50% off the time it takes to learn the second one. Now there might still be some technical challenges or some, some different musical challenges within it, but the notes are so similar that when you see those, those different parts that are similar, you can work on them together and understand the music so much better. So when you're working and as this course is put together, you can go bit by bit and look at the technical challenges of each little part. So some of the things that we talk about within this course is keeping the melody on top. So here we have a chord. I know this is really small, but we have these chords and there is a melody note that's on top. And so we talk about how to bring that note out, how to play with your right hand so that that top note really sings while the chord underneath it just supports it and doesn't overshadow it. Over here in the D section, we have a bar chord up here. We have a shift up to the fifth position right here. And so we talk all about how to shift so that it's easy, it's really clean, there's no gripping and wondering. It's like, will it land and will it be clear? It's always just absolutely, ooh, don't do that. So that you can relax and know that every single time you play it will be smooth and absolutely precise and just come out clear and so that you don't have to tense up making your musical line all herky-jerky. Instead, you can play move the shift, get into the bar chord really nice and gently so that it's easy on your hands and so you can continue the flowing nature of that section of music. One of the best parts of music is volume. It's one of the big characteristics of beautiful music. And so we talk a lot, we have these different ramps through here, dynamic markings, soft, loud, get louder here, get softer here in different places. And there's this get softer right there. So. We talk all about how to do that and how to taper the, the music or grow the music so it's got the best effect leading forward into the next piece. We also talk about the right hand. And if you'll notice all these little notes up here, we have right hand fingerings and how to play these right hand fingerings 
and why? That's one of the big questions that a lot of people have is, why would you play with that particular finger and what does it really matter? And so we talk about exactly what is the fingering for this part, for each part, each and every part, and why is that? Why choose that fingering over another one? So by the time that you've gone through this course, then you'll know how to choose fingerings for different musical situations and what you would base those decisions on. So this is a wonderful piece. I love this piece. It's super fun to practice. It's, uh, it's got such a nice uplifting rhythm and musicality to it. And so I hope that you will take this course and enjoy it as much as I enjoy practicing and playing this music as well. And so if you have any questions, call. Otherwise, you could probably find a link down below to learn more about it and get started. All right, if you'd like to, you can stick around right now and listen to me playing it as well. Okay, see you soon. Thank you so much, bye-bye. Thank you.